Hi guys, this is Frivoli with another pen review and today we're going to have a look at the Traveler's Company Fountain Pen. I got this kindly sent over for review by Nomado Store. The kind people over there at Nomado Store came with a nice little handwritten thank you card, nomadostore.com, the address if you want to check it out. A turtle, a lucky turtle is their logo, comes with a nice little sticker, came with a nice cute little turtle paper clip, which I find very cute. A lot of attention to detail right there. Super nice packaging and corporate identity idea, if you ask me. But hey, we're here for the fountain pen. So let's look at the stuff. The package came with, um, so the package of the fountain pen came with uh, six ink cartridges. I believe that they normally don't come with a fountain pen. I think the Nomado store people have just thrown that into the package for me. Uh, blue black ink cartridge, uh, standard international, as you can see here on the package. So the pen, uh, pocket pen, uh, travel, travel size fountain pen takes the standard international ink cartridges. I always, even though I can't read it, appreciate all these Japanese signs on here. I just think it looks super cool. And I do believe that it makes a whole lot of sense. What they write there, packaging, that's the small box in which this pen comes, travelerscompany.com. It's the same company in Japan that makes the oh so famous Traveler's Notebooks. I have a passport size here. Got that from the Mado store as well a while back. Um, there's also a review of that one up on my blog scribbly.org. If you go there to the uh, notebook review section, you'll find that. Slide that out, pen was laying in here, brass fountain pen, Traveler's Company. It's like sort of like a bullet pencil, bullet pencils do look like that bullet style pen. We're going to dig into that in a minute when we have a closer look at the pen, but that's just as a small heads up. So that's what the type of pen that it is. This is a fountain pen, yes, that can be stored compactly. Yes, we've seen that and there's a picture of it. F-type, fine type black ink. So yes, this is a fine steel nib on here, all correct. And it came with a black ink cartridge, fantastic. The appearance of brass brings you back old memories and fascinates you deeply. Long time use changes the material quality, turning it into a precious tool, yeah. Also true brass, of course, as you touch it and uh, the salt and the fat of your hand reacts with the brass here, you see that it, uh, gets this really beautiful, nice patina. And of course, like, you know, that's the philosophy of all the Traveler's products, like these leather Traveler's notebooks. They should get scratch marks and scuff marks look really like, you know, you know, almost like sort of a little bit vintagey, destroyed, wasted. They take a good beating. They've been on the roads, they've been traveling and those pens sort of follow that same logic and that same narrative. They should also look like well-aged, well-lived. Cool. Um, what else do we have here on the package? M made in Japan. Um, saying brass fountain pen here, brass fountain pen. Yeah, that's basically it. Cool packaging again. A lot of attention to detail, very minimalist, really nice. And I just really appreciate the Japanese packaging. It doesn't matter if it's fountain pens or ink bottles, just really cute. So here is the pen saying already here, Traveler's Company made in Japan as said, a bullet pencil shaped uh, pen. That's the shape of it, cylindrical, and then this kind of bullety thing down here. Up here we have some ridges, looks kind of cool. You have that thingy up here through which you could potentially um, put a thread or a leather strap or something like that. Then either just have it looking cool, a sort of like um, the Y Studio fountain pen kind of thingy or you can then attach it to your backpack, hang it around your neck, put it on your keychain, wherever you may want to store the pen. Has a clip which is super cool because you can just clip it into your pocket or shirt pocket or something like that. If you would like to, you could also remove the clip. I'll show you that here. Just take the clip apart and uh, there's a small rubber o-ring right here to make it nice and tight so that then the nib doesn't dry out because of course the nib is stored in here that will seal it off. And now you have a clipless fountain pen. 
if that's what you prefer. However, you will always have this little ridge or hole in there, which I find aesthetically then not so nice. But anyway, I prefer to have the pen with a clip for two reasons. First of all, it's a pocket pen and of course I can then have it in my pocket. And second of all, uh, it also serves, the clip also does serve as a roll stopper and the pen then just does not roll off the desk. If you have it there, kind of nice thing as well that always aligns. So it's always like that, you know, in parallel with or in line with the clip, which I find super cool. I had that off and on a couple of times and always when you screw it back on, it does align like this. Super nice. Again, speaking for the attention for detail, then this super cool engraving here, Traveler's Company made in Japan, also sort of vintagey looking, reminiscent of the old days, together with the patina here, looks just really, really beautiful. Now I've had this pen in use for like, say a good two months, maybe even three, so that's what it will look like after that amount of time. You see the patina here around the clip, really beautiful. Under the clip, you sort of get a, ah, I, I, yeah, I wanted to show you that better when I had the clip off. Now, doesn't matter, you see it anyway, that shiny brass part under the clip here, that's how it looked when it was new. So it picked up a good amount of patina. And if you don't like that, if you want the shiny thing in your back, you just take a polishing clothes and some brass polish, you polish it off and you're back with your old, uh, old new shiny pen. But of course it will pick up the patina again. So that's how you sort of like take the pen apart. There is like a small metal thingies in here that will then hold the pen in place. When you put it in here, that is pretty sturdy, takes quite a bit of effort to take it out. Goes easy enough for it to make it a fast process, but still sturdy enough for the pen not just come off accidentally like that. So that won't happen, right? And then when you have the pen in hand, it's actually a beautiful, you know, sized, very, very well sized pen. Very nice, very balanced, not top heavy at all. It's maybe a little bit slim and slender for my taste. It sort of feels a little bit like a Caveco Lilliput. Now I don't have a Caveco Lilliput here for a direct comparison. Uh, but I have a Caveco Sport here and we'll compare it to the Caveco Sport in a minute. You also see that down here at the section, the pen has a little bit more patina because of course that's where you hold it. And it then says Traveler, Traveler's Company here, um, TRC in that diamond shaped imprint here, also Traveler's Company of course. And then F for fine, it's a steel nib, no breather hole. Feet down there. I don't know who makes the nibs for them. Looks a bit Joe-ish, but of course that's now just like a completely wild guess. I could be totally mistaken. That's the pen. Really beautiful, definitely an eye catcher, definitely robust. Um, as said, it takes standard international cartridges. Open it up like here, and I have an orange ink cartridge in here. I think I refilled that with a siren. That's some kind of, a, I think it's Kave. Uh, KWZ in English, in English, of course. KWZ ink orange, I think. Um, you could probably fit the Caveco piston converter in there. Not entirely sure if that would fit. We can look at it, I have one here. If you give me that minute, I will do that for you. This is my little bag of converters here. This is the Caveco piston converter. So let's see if that would technically fit in here once that is fully extended. A bit difficult to, oh, sorry. That was the camera. Get the converter out, but I think it's worth looking at. No, that will unfortunately not work, right? Will be too long, but hey, we have the squeeze converter as well. We can look if the squeeze converter would fit. If that's something that you're interested in, if you want to use those, but you could, just refill them with a syringe. Yep, I guess the squeeze converter would fit, but maybe tight. Well, probably better to refill it with a syringe. Just wanted to double check that for you. I didn't have time to check that before. Now we tried it. So that's that. Standard international cartridge in here. Fits very well. Great. You could 
use the pen for some very quick notes, you know, just maybe crossing off a checklist or something like that, ticking the boxes, that works, right? I mean, you can, you can write a few notes. But it's not very comfortable. It's a lot better um, you post it. Just wanted to show you that right here. Now we go for a size comparison. And uh, here we have, this is the Caveco AL Sport. That's the new rose gold, by the way, that's lined up for review as well. So review coming. And you see in length, they are actually pretty similar. The Traveler's Company fountain pen is a tad shorter, but that's really just two or three millimeters. You could essentially say that they're the same in length. So in girls, you then have a difference. The Traveler's Company pen is a lot thinner. Okay, not a lot thinner, but it is quite a bit thinner. Of course, that one now is heavier because it's brass. This here is aluminum. <clears throat> but if you would have the aluminum uh, Caveco Sport, you would end up at a probably quite a similar um, weight. Now, price-wise, as we talk about the materials and all that, the Traveler's Fountain Pen sells for, I think, 69 euro at Nomado store. Um, it's not a super inexpensive pen, but it's also not really expensive or not even closely expensive if you compare it to the AL Sport, for instance, that sells for 59 euros. So that's like sort of like the same ballpark. I think the Brass Sport also goes for like 69 or even like a bit over 70 euro. So it's the pen is sort of comparable to the Caveco AL Sport, Brass Sport. So I think it's fair pricing. In that sense, let's uncap them. Uncapped, of course, that Traveler's fountain pen here is quite a bit shorter. Uh, the Caveco Sport is actually quite usable for short load notes, at least when unposted. Let's post these two and see how they compare then. The Traveler's Company fountain pen is now quite a bit longer, maybe one and a half centimeters or something like that. Let's look at the sections. You see what I meant when I said that the section is fairly slim, maybe comparable to a Caveco Lilliput section without having one around. The Lilliput is maybe a tad thinner, but you see, I mean, the Caveco Sport does not exactly have a beefy, chunky section and the one of the Traveler's fountain pen here is even slimmer. Number five nib on both of them right here. And last but not least, let's have a comparison to my standard size reference fountain pen, which is the Lamy Safari. And of course the Lamy Safari is a lot larger, but I think this helps you put that nice compact, compact pocket sized fountain pen in perspective. Really a healthy full size pen when posted, and last but not least, let's do a writing sample now. This is a true fine nib. This is not a Japanese fine, even though it's a Japanese fountain pen, but this is not really a Japanese fine nib. It's a Western fine nib, has a very smooth, but has a nice pleasurable amount of feedback. Really nice, fine nib. I believe you hear the feedback a little bit. Um, this orange ink here is sort of a medium wettish. So is the pen. It's not an excessively wet writer, but it's also not a very dry writer at all. Just a nice medium amount of wetness. As said, it's a pretty genuine fine nib. This AL Sport here does have a medium nib on. Can write a couple of lines here just for you to be able to compare. Line width. Um, well, this medium here is also quite on the fine side. I believe that Caveco changed their nibs to from um, Bok to Jovo. And uh, the Jovo ones apparently run a little bit on the finer side.
So that's a direct comparison. Well, the medium here runs quite a little bit wider than that fine of this Traveler's Fountain Pen. I would say it's a true to the size Western fine nib. That was that with the review of this pen. I think it's a very unique design, pretty cool pen, definitely a great pocket pen, definitely great to take onto trips um, as it's like really easily stowable, sturdy, takes really a beat. You can throw that thing around, refillable with the standard international ink cartridges, which you pretty much get worldwide. Or hey, just take a six pack with you because that will last you actually for quite a while. What's left for me is saying thank you now, Nomado Store, for having sent this for, uh, to me for review. Good folks out there, if you want to check out nomadostore.com, here you are with the address. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next review. Bye bye.